Um, this is uh, this is true that uh, COVID nineteen has, uh, has uh, literally changed uh, the face of the world, and uh, it has changed uh, to some extent our hearts and minds. And it has led uh, many countries to uh, to uh, to adopt important restrictions upon uh, rights and uh, fundamental freedoms in order to uh, to to fight against the spread of uh, the virus uh, COVID uh, COVID nineteen. So this is an unprecedented challenge that uh, uh, European countries and others are uh, facing now, as uh, it affects uh, multiple uh, human rights. Uh, and uh, freedoms such as uh, mostly our uh, freedom of uh, assembly and uh, association protected and guaranteed by article 11 as you know it our freedom of uh, thought conscience and uh, religion protected and guaranteed by article 9 our freedom of movement mainly uh, uh, article 2 of protocol number 4 uh, to the uh, european convention uh, article uh, eight obviously uh, private but also family life and uh, our uh, rights not to be uh, discriminated during uh, police uh, police controls um, a quite famous uh, uh, professor of law uh, famous in, um, in in france uh, uh, professor uh, uh, sudre jean-francois sudre to paraphrase uh, him i would say that the uh, the echr law is being put in uh, in quarantine I will try to, uh, to, uh, to tackle the problem from a French perspective and also uh, from a uh, French and ECHR combined uh, uh, perspective. Uh, worth, uh, worth noting is uh, the fact that uh, France has not made any declaration to Article uh, 15. Uh, you heard uh, Pamela McCormick uh, before before me uh, from uh, from uh, from her very nice living room by the way uh, from the court from the registry of the court uh, she uh, listed uh, the, the the member states uh, i think there are less than a dozen 10 10 of them uh, have uh, made such a declaration under article uh, 15 not france this is a, a political choice france uh, chose uh, not to uh, uh, Make, uh, made uh, such a declaration in the article uh, three. However, on the uh, 14th of uh, March 2020, um, President uh, Emmanuel Macron announces uh, to uh, the population the complete shutdown, the complete lockdown of the whole country um, to be um, enter into force uh, from uh, 16th of March 2020 and uh, the next week, a week after, on the 23rd of March 2020, France uh, was uh, under a sanitary emergency regime by adopting a specific law, uh, law uh, number 2020-290, uh, related to the fights against the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic um and a law enabling the government to legislate by executive uh decrees or executive orders with very little control of the parliament so this is that very law 23rd march 2020 that enables the government to legiferate or to legislate on uh, any kind of measures to fight the spread of COVID-19. So please note that um, this is not a state of public emergency regime that uh, France is having right now. <clears throat> um, France uh, made the, 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 the choice to use uh, uh, classic restrictions to uh, the convention rights rather than the, the derogation system. Uh, all lockdown measures uh, limiting the, the fundamental freedoms are those adopted by decree, by governmental decree, and among them, two of them are worth uh, noting. The existence of a new category of police, police interventions, fines, and other obligations, wearing a mask, 
shutdown of uh, restaurants, shutdown of cinemas, shutdowns of theaters, bars, etc. And uh, the second point is the existence of a, a, a self uh, certification, self certificate, or self certification of exit, uh, which is which was, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, very very French, quite uh, quite unique in uh, in in Europe, where uh, uh, French people had to uh, to tick the right box corresponding to uh, the the right reason justifying their uh, exit from their apartments or homes and uh, reasons which were limited to five five reasons buying products of first necessity or electronic device um, uh, electronic uh, devices for one hour only uh, buying uh, medicine uh, free walk or sport activity limited to one hour to a, a per perimeter of uh, one kilometer maximum um, uh, exit for um, uh, emergency reasons to take care of a relative in uh, in need uh, or uh, a meeting with a professional in the health uh, sector that's it that was a limited uh, limited list so a lot a lot of fines and even uh, arrests uh, were uh, taken or pronounced uh, in a very short uh, period of uh, time, which uh, leads to uh, several questions. How to ensure the fair balance between human rights and the fight against COVID-19, which is a legitimate objective. Um, and what are, in, in, in those uh, types of uh, sanitary crisis, the obligations lying upon the shoulders of uh, governments uh, authorities and in particular with regard to the principle of certainty and the principle of legality so uh, legal certainty in any uh, event the, the the principle of uh, uh, certainty or the principle of legality we will see that uh, in a bit is the common denominator when it comes to assess the conformity, the compatibility, that, well, I, I, I would rather say the, the conformity of uh, COVID-19 related fines as the interference at issue must have a solid and a sound legal basis. So whatever whatever uh, affected rights or freedoms uh, we are talking about it is always about legal certainty does the interference have some legal basis so what kind of rights uh, are we uh, talking about article 5 paragraph 1 of the echr because in case of uh, legal uh, uh, repeated uh, offenses recidivism three times in one month, you may be sentenced to uh, jail, to uh, prison, in accordance with uh, national law. And uh, this is the um, article of a public health code, uh, uh, article L3136-2, uh, 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 to be very precise, of the uh, public health code. Article 8 is um, comes um, also uh, into into play of course as uh, the, the the prohibition to leave uh, home is uh, manifestly an interference of your private but also your family life and above all um, it concerns your uh, moral integrity article 9 article 10 article 11 um, uh, Almost all uh, provisions of the uh, ECHR are concerned. Of course, uh, when uh, we uh, are talking about uh, fines and uh, police police contraventions, Article One, Paragraph Two uh, of Protocol One is also uh, very much uh, concerned, as well as uh, Article Two of Protocol Four, freedom of uh, uh, movement. And even um, uh, right now, we have this uh, this current debate in France. Article uh, 2 of Protocol 1, uh, the rights to uh, education, which is uh, invoked by uh, 
syndicates of uh, students to reopen the, the French universities to the students. So uh, uh, let me remind you uh, uh, the, the, the core principle of uh, what does legal certainty and legality mean uh, into the uh, ECHR uh, system. Uh, legal certainty is um, necessarily inherent in the entire law of the uh, European Convention and is a protection against uh, arbitrary. Um, it is also reminded in the preamble of the uh, ECHR. Uh, secondly, um, legal certainty is um, closely linked to the principle of uh, legality, which is uh, actually uh, one of the pillars of uh, legal certainty which is necessary, a necessary condition of the existence of uh, the rule of law. Uh, this is then under Article 7 of the uh, Convention that the court has uh, uh, developed its uh, case law in relation with uh, the principle of legality. In a uh, nutshell, uh, Article uh, 7, you have it on your screen, uh, does not prohibit only uh, the retrospective application of criminal law, but it also uh, embodies more uh, generally speaking the, the, the principle that only the law that can define crime and prescribe penalty. This is a Latin formula, nullum crimen, nulla poena, sine lege. It also lays down the principle that Criminal law must not be extensively construed uh, to an accused uh, judgment, for instance, by analogy. And most um, importantly, the notion of law uh, in Article uh, 7 is the very same notion, the concept, as uh, the one of uh, Article 5, 6, and 8 to uh, 12. Uh, it comprises uh, statutory law, uh, jurisprudence, case law, and implies qualitative requirements, notably those of accessibility and foreseeability. So these uh, uh, two uh, criteria are very much relevant into the context of uh, uh, the sanitary uh, crisis. More specifically, as to the, the, the foreseeability criteria, an uh, offense must be clearly uh, prescribed by a law, which is uh, uh, satisfied where the individual can uh, know from the very wording of uh, the relevant provision, and if need be with the assistance of a, of a, of a lawyer, or proper legal counsel, what acts or what omissions will make him or her uh, liable. This is a very classic case law uh, uh, of, uh, back to uh, the, the 1993 Kotinakis versus uh, Greece, or even Mars versus Belgium, or um, Brownowski versus uh, Poland, among many, many, many others. So that is to say that to foresee the, 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 the applicants uh, must be able to foresee to a reasonable degree, degree the, the, the consequences which a given action may entail. So, applying now those principles to the context of the legality of uh, uh, COVID-19 related fines, um, this is uh, what we can, we can say. In the context of the current sanitary crisis we are all facing, this is uh, true that the principle of uh, legality and certainty have been put under an extreme uh, pressure, possibly, in my view, leading to a violation of uh, the European uh, Convention and its protocols, for the following reason. First, uh, the, the very specific context in which the, the, the decree of uh, 23rd March uh, 2020 in France was uh, drafted. The drafting of the text was very, very quick, a matter of a few days. It was written in very broad terms in order to be able to adapt to the situation. Secondly, the very impressive number of amendments made to these decrees ordinance. I listed 10 of them, uh, have been taken in a very short period of time. Uh, 
which was very hard to follow even for uh, professionals like me or like uh, the other uh, lawyers. Plus the lack of communication of uh, uh, the government upon those uh, several uh, amendments. So concerning the fines, um, I must say that uh, the, those uh, decrees were uh, uh, drafted in very vague uh, terms, uh, vagueness of the uh, obligations uh, and definitions. What type of uh, first necessary products are we talking about? People were allowed to buy when out of their homes. What uh, types of vehicles was allowed? We did not really know what types of vehicles. Uh, bicycles, which raised uh, many, many uh, cases up to the Supreme Court, uh, to the Conseil, uh, Conseil d'État, the Council of States. How many times per day uh, you could uh, uh, be out of your home? What uh, kind of uh, shops were you allowed to, uh, to, uh, to go to to buy your, uh, your products? What was the extent of uh, police checks and police controls to verify whether or not the reason you had ticked uh, was uh, the good one or the wrong one? Uh, does uh, the police, uh, is the police allowed to check into your purse to see what kind of products did you buy to the shop? Uh, all these questions were uh, and uh, remained uh, unanswered uh, for uh, the majority of, of them. Significant differences in uh, interpretation uh, uh, of the law between police services uh, were also uh, uh, an, an issue for, for, for lawyers. Uh, let's see some example, not the proportionality test, but yes, all right. Uh, for example, uh, um, 20, 20, uh, 5 March to 2020, so two days, only two days after the adoption of the, of the, of the executive decree, a man was uh, fined in front of a, of a laundromat. Uh, although he was holding uh, the, the, the self uh, derogatory certificate in, in, due, in due form. Uh, a woman was uh, fined for having uh, bought a pregnancy test. All right, 22, 22 of March. Uh, a man was um, also uh, fined as he was not properly running although he had selected the box of sport activity was not properly running so we don't, we don't really understand what does it mean so it appeared that he was half walking half running and that the police officer considered that it was then in between and he was able to find this poor 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 guy um a journalist um, journalist was also uh, fine that uh, he was uh, carrying with him his, uh, his press car which, which was a, a sufficient uh, uh, reason to be uh, to be out on the, on, on the strip um, and um, another multiple verbalization for the same uh, for the same behaviors uh, ticking the several several boxes at the same time then you receive multiple fights. Uh, so all those, these, many, some of them at least, um, of those uh, cases uh, uh, were processed uh, along the, the, the judicial uh, authorities and um, uh, up to uh, the French uh, Constitutional Council and uh, the French uh, Supreme Court in uh, administrative matters as well, the Council of State. Um, Two decisions are important. French decisions are worth uh, mentioning. First of all, the Constitutional Council decision uh, 2028 for six of uh, uh, 26 June, adopted in the, of the 
the day of the 26 June 2020. Uh, three cases were uh, referred to uh, the Constitutional Council by the Court of Cassation, which is the, the, the French uh, Supreme Court in Civil and Criminal Matters, as a matter of compliance with the rights and freedoms guaranteed by the Constitution of the provision of the, the Article uh, 31st, 36-1 of the Public Health Code, which criminalized the violation of prohibitions or obligations enacted uh, by the French law. Uh, the, the applicant parties uh, claimed that um, the article was too vague and uh, that it brought uh, the, the risk that the person who goes out may be the object of several contraventions at a row. So in that very important decision, um, decision, the Constitutional Council uh, considered that it was not possible to punish the same illegal exit twice in uh, application with uh, the principle of non bis in them. Uh, and uh, the French uh, Conseil d'État, the, the, the Council of State, um, uh, 30 April 2020, uh, after uh, countless fines about uh, using bicycles, finally the Council of State uh, authorized the use of bicycles as an authorized vehicle to get out in respect of uh, Article 3 of uh, the uh, enabling law of uh, 2020 to 9 uh, zero. So, you see that uh, we had to go up to the French uh, Council of State simply to uh, know whether or not we could use our bicycle, which is a little bit crazy. Proportionality uh, and necessity of, uh, of fines uh, in, in France, the uh, amount, the amount in France of uh, fine may. Uh, rise up no this is not this slide this is this one may rise up um, uh, from uh, um, 135 euros up to 3750 euros and in case of repeated action repeated violation recidivism you may go to jail uh, so first violation of the exit ban it's uh, it is uh, 135 euros fine second violation within 15 days from the first violation uh, it is only only uh, 200 euros but for more than three violations in a period of one month in a row um, this is no more a contravention a police contravention but it, be, it becomes a criminal offense punishable by a possible prison sentence six months six months' time and a fine of 3,750 euros. If you compare to um, the other European countries, um, I must say that France is quite uh, reasonable. In Spain, if I am not uh, mistaken, fines for non-compliance are ranging from 600 to 10,400 euros. In uh, Germany, it may go up to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, to uh, more than 20 or 25,000 euros in the event of repeated offense. In, uh, in Italy, this is uh, not uh, a contravention. It is considered as a serious, serious offense and, and, and sometimes uh, as a serious crimes uh, for uh, manslaughter or uh, personal injury uh, under the, the, the criminal code uh, with a, a possible prison sentence uh, from three months to 18 months and a fine ranging from 500 to 5,000. Uh, and the, in the UK, the, uh, the amount of the fine may uh, go up to 10,000 uh, pounds. So I think uh, I don't know in your country, but I think in France was um, in the in the middle of that of that list. So from the the ECHR perspective, 
as you are well aware, the court uh, will assess whether the interference is necessary uh, in a democratic uh, society. In that respect, the case law is quite rich. The court has already uh, its own case law uh, related to the proportionality test of fines in the context of Article 10, Article 5 also, and uh, most of it is uh, to be found in the case related to um, Article 1 of the protocol. In fiscal matters, for example, in a custom uh, penalty, uh, you, should, you, you, you can uh, go and uh, check uh, the, the French case uh, Griff Horst versus uh, France, and uh, in the field of the um, urban uh, planning, a physical constraint equivalent to a detention intended to guarantee the payment of a fine uh, was um, uh, considered as um, a, non a non violation case in the case of Jami versus France, and an administrative fine in urban planning matters amounting to 100% of the value of the property built uh, structure was considered as too much and uh, a violation case in the case of uh, uh, Valico SLR versus uh, Italy. So when it comes to assessing the proportionality test of the amount of fines under Article 1, uh, Paragraph 2 of Protocol 1 of the uh, ECHR, as you know, the, 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 the margin of appreciation left to member states by uh, the European Code of Human Rights is very wide. So the, the disproportion of the amount of the fine may be found only when the imposition of the fine uh, in question is detrimental to the applicant's financial situation or is manifestly disproportionate in relation with the legitimate aim the fine is pursuing. So that leaves actually, in my view, uh, uh, very little room for finding a uh, violation. However, uh, in the context um, of the fight against uh, COVID-19, uh, other elements uh, could be uh, taken into consideration. The context of the emergency, the position of your uh, national jurisdiction, and the amount, the, uh, the global amount of the fine uh, you, are, you are facing. And the possibility uh, to be sentenced to, uh, to, uh, to jail or to, uh, to, to prison. So to ensure the effectiveness, the effectiveness sorry, about the impugned uh, measure, police forces operated many, many controls. And this is the second part of my uh, presentation. Uh, uh, let me give you some, uh, uh, some figures in France. Uh, Christophe Castaner, former Minister of the Interior, uh, in a tweet, uh, indicated that um, uh, over 20 million checks, 1 million uh, fines, and uh, 570 lawsuits during the first confinement last March. During the second uh, confinement, only 5 million checks. Uh, there had been a notable, significant increase of the use of physical uh, violence, both physical and verbal violence, police violence, during this, uh, this period. We have some uh, sources, but unreliable sources, with, uh, coming from alternative uh, media, such as uh, Basta, Mag and Rebellion Internet News, which uh, indicate that um, six people, six uh, people have even died in uh, such uh, circumstances of police checks during the two months of the first uh, of the first uh, confinement. Police controls lead to uh, the questions of uh, targeted controls, and the numbers of fines show a significant difference between categories of persons who are fined. North African people, sub-Saharan uh, people uh, origin, 
and suburban or city uh, dwellers. In some uh, reports, mainly in uh, NGOs, and, uh, and in particular, a report dated uh, June 2020, uh, adopted by uh, Amnesty International. I will give you the reference in a bit. So the question of uh, discrimination in relation with profiling and targeted policing came uh, rather, rather quickly. And I see that time is flying, so I will finish in, uh, in three to four minutes. A few reminders uh, of um, what are we uh, talking about uh, uh, from the ECHR perspective. Uh, I think we are clearly in a direct uh, discrimination and uh, not an indirect uh, discrimination. The definition of um, the direct discrimination is uh, as follows. Is, uh, when you have a situation in which one person is uh, treated less favorably than another is or would be treated in a comparable situation. We have a lot of um, case law about it. <clears throat> Very classic, Bio, Carson, others versus, uh, versus UK. Uh, in the context of uh, COVID-19, police controls, we are clearly in the presence of a possible direct uh, discrimination. What rights and freedoms could be um, invoked? Mostly uh, Article uh, 8 and uh, uh, moral, psychologically, uh, psychological integrity, as uh, Article 8 covers the right to be protected from uh, uh, morally and, and physically, also. Uh, the, the notion of a private life is so uh, broad, broadly interpreted by the court that it may cover your right to be psychologically and, uh, protected from humiliating police checks. And uh, of course, it has to be combined with uh, Article 14 of the um, ECHR, uh, which prohibits uh, any kind of uh, discrimination. We have a case law, um, quite interesting. Uh, this is a case of Timichev, Timichev versus Russia. Uh, 2006, where the ECHR ruled, and this is very interesting, on the legality of certain police uh, controls. And uh, it considered on the, this uh, occasion that, uh, and I'm reading, I'm quoting, in, the, in any event, no difference in treatment which is based exclusively or to a decisive extent on a person's ethnic origin is capable of being objectively justified in a contemporary democratic society built on the principles of pluralism and respect for different culture. We have an issue in France, a very big and recurrent issue uh, with, uh, with a discriminatory character of police controls. And let me, to finish, uh, uh, try to uh, set out what is the, 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 the problem we are facing now in France is uh, that even if we have we have some case law uh, prohibiting, of course, this any kind of discrimination in police checks, all right? And you, the French Court of Cassation uh, gave an important uh, case law on uh, November 2016 on that matter. However, we have now a, a, some kind of resistance from uh, many courts of appeal, uh, courts of appeal, uh, and among them the Court of Appeal of Paris, which is the biggest uh, court of appeal we have in the, in, the, in the country. The Court of Appeal, considering that, uh, given that, in a specific location, geographical zone, where we know that statistically crime rate is high, then because the, 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 the crime rate is high in that specific zone, then police officers may control uh, mainly uh, the population on, 
on uh, uh, because of their physical uh, characteristic. And this is very much uh, uh, debatable uh, because uh, in French law, what you have to uh, justify if uh, you, police officer, you want to uh, operate a, a police check is the behavior, the very behavior of the person you want to, uh, to control and not the, uh, the, the localization, which is contrary to uh, uh, many uh, jurisprudence of uh, many uh, court of appeal in France. So this is still uh, debatable. Um, we have no uh, case law on the court of cassation concerning the geographical uh, zone. But uh, I hope that we will have uh, one uh, soon. Uh, and uh, I think I will uh, stop now. I wanted to talk about a uh, report on uh, a possible social discrimination studying uh, map concerning the Seine Saint Denis example, which is the uh, the poorest uh, department we have in the north of uh, of paris where uh, a, a study showed that uh, uh, most uh, police checks have been operated in that zone where uh, we know that uh, this is the, the, the poorest uh, department in france so can we make the link between um, social status social origin, wealth condition, and police controls. Uh, uh, this uh, study uh, response is uh, positive. Thank you very much.